Let's do a cheap versus expensive DJ controller. On this side, we have the DDJ200, cheap. Then on this side, we have the DDJ800, kinda expensive. We're gonna look at the build quality, features, software support, and try to figure out if the expensive is really worth it or if you can just get by with the cheap one. Now, starting out with the build quality, we obviously know that Pioneer makes one of the best DJ controllers out there, but we obviously cannot expect these two to be built the same. Let's start with the knobs. Now, if you only have the DDJ200, you wouldn't be able to see that these knobs are actually low quality, but if you compare them to this one, then it's obvious. For instance, you see these, these knobs wiggle and these ones are just sturdy, but you literally get what you pay for. This does not affect your mix in any way though, but it's good to know that you have quality when you buy the more expensive one. And then the faders on the DDJ800 are a lot smoother and they're obviously bigger. And on this side, it's, it's not as smooth and it makes a lot more noise compared to this one. And obviously with the bigger faders, you can be a little bit more precise as opposed to this one. Now the cross faders are actually the same size, but this one sounds a bit cheap compared to this one. But in all honesty, the cross fader does not matter unless you're a scratch DJ, then you use this a lot. But if you're a normal DJ like me, Bruh. we don't really use this as much. And then let's go to the Q and play buttons. Now these ones are very identical to the buttons that you would find in a CDJ 2000 Nexus, for instance. Whereas these ones, they're a lot smaller and they just feel kind of cheap, you know? Both of them are made of plastic, but these ones just feel more plasticky, if that makes sense. And then the performance pads are actually just day and night. On this one, you have small, clicky pads. They're made of plastic, so this is what they sound like. It just doesn't sound right for performance pads. And then on this one, it's they're all rubber, so you don't really hear anything, like nothing. This makes it easy to use them and you can actually finger drum on them if you wanted to. Um, I think it's obvious that this category is a clear win for the more expensive one, I mean. And then moving on to the features, um, this is not going to be fair. So the expensive one has three audio outputs, two microphone inputs, and an aux input to play music on your phone, and the cheap one, does not have any of that. The expensive one can be used as a standalone mixer. The jog wheels are bigger and they have a screen that shows you the information about the songs that you're currently playing. The player section has all the buttons that you would find in a club standard Pioneer CDJ 2000 Nexus. It also has jog adjust, so if it's on the light side, then you can, it spins for a longer time. And then if you have it on this side, then it spins for a lesser time. And then the mixer section is pretty much identical to the club standard mixers to a point where transitioning from this one to the club is seamless. And then the cheap one has slash does none of that, but it does have Bluetooth that you can use to connect to your iPad or your phone and the expensive one does not, but this is still a clear win for the more expensive one. Now let's move on to the software support and this is where things take a turn. Here's a list of software and apps that you can use with the cheaper DDJ200. There's Record Box, We DJ, E-DJing, Virtual DJ, and many, many more. And then the more expensive DDJ800 can be used with Record Box and nothing else. That's that's it. And that's a win for the cheaper DDJ 200. So let's try and conclude. Is the DDJ 800 worth it for the price? Absolutely. Of course, 100%. And can you get by with the cheaper DDJ 200? Of course. Okay. Both of these controllers are targeted at two different consumers with different levels of skill. You can pick up the DDJ200 if you're just starting out or if you're intermediate, but you just don't have the budget for the bigger ones. And then you can pick up the DDJ800 or higher if you do have the budget and you do have the skills and the knowledge to use such a controller. Both controllers and more can be found in the description. Hopefully you got some value from this video and if you did, please consider subscribing. And if you wanna see a video about what DJs actually do, then here's a video for you up here. Thank you for watching. Catch you on the next one. Peace.